Hi Daniel, welcome to Amsterdam, welcome to Bitcoin Wednesday. Great Thanks to have you here. Um, can you please give an introduction of, of your work at, at Chain Security as a lead auditor? Yeah, sure. Um, so. Thanks a lot for the invitation for the interview. At Chain Security, I'm the lead security auditor, which um, basically means um, uh, leading the team and coordinating security audits. And what it means from a technical perspective is, of course, we pick apart the smart contracts or the systems surrounding smart contracts in detail and in depth as much as we can, of course, provided the documentation and specification of the project by uh, the teams that approach us. And then we try to find weak spots in the system and identify those, find as many vulnerabilities as we can, of course. We try to always provide kind of a proof of concept exploit or list all potential, potential consequences of uh, any unintended uh, happenings on the code level, really. And uh, at the end, what we try to present the client is a kind of a, come, like a wholesome um, review of all of the things that we found so that ideally the project can fix them before they go live. Okay. Nice. And how did you get up into, uh, into crypto and in, into uh, change security specifically? Um, so it was a funny story that when I was a student at ETH Zurich, uh, there was a mailing list for computer science students looking for jobs. And at that point, the company was just founded um, by the three original founders. And uh, they were looking for students with first experience in blockchain. And as I've been following Bitcoin kind of for a bit on and off and reading articles, I thought that, yeah, that would qualify as first experience. So I applied for the job and it turned out to be fine. And um, I first started just part time and quickly, it, uh, as with many people in the scene, I went down the kind of crypto rabbit hole, spent a lot of time on it, had some um, interesting insights and discussions, could learn a lot from our co-founders, which eventually transformed into an internship then even in the full-time involvement, I delayed my master's start for it as well. And uh, yeah, that was the, the summary of it. Okay, and you told me you had a experience at Deutsche Bank before. Yeah. Uh, so how did that go? Um, so that was a really, really interesting experience because it was fairly on in uh, my academic and professional career as well. I mean, it still is. I uh, applied for their summer program. Um, where you could uh, spend the time really intense in a department. And for me, there was trading and M&A in Frankfurt. And um, I quickly realized that kind of the whole atmosphere and there was a lack of collaborative spirit. And um, yeah, I didn't enjoy it particularly. And for me, that was the point where I knew, okay, this is not the sphere that I want to spend further professional time in. So it was a good experience, but uh, also a negative one in the sense that I found out what I did not want to do later. Okay, that's great to learn. And uh, talking about uh, chain security, mm -hmm. so uh, I read that you did projects for Augur and Kyber, amongst yeah. others. So who are the, the clients of chain security? Um, so the clients have a really a wide range um, from really big projects, as you mentioned, like Kyber, Augur, DAOstack, um, desktop and big established exchanges or cryptocurrencies, tokens to um, decentralized exchanges or even just on a protocol level, kind of powering other things, um, set protocol being a financial instrument to really small like individual groups of people who want to use smart contracts in a very specific use case and just want to have some assurance that it's really going the way it's kind of intended to be. Um, so yeah, I'd say there are everyone who uses blockchain technology in one way or another uh, often connects to us and asks us on, on our inputs. Okay, great. And so how do, do you get clients as change security? What do you do for acquisition or do you have a lot of yeah. people coming in from the um, So the kind of, it's a bit related to the story of chain securities founding itself, I guess. And um, the company was founded out of PhD research of the founders who wrote a tool, Securify, to automatically analyze smart contracts. And a lot of what we do in our work is try to optimize the processes of finding vulnerabilities um, and to streamline kind of the whole thing. And over time, um, this research kind of got traction in the academic community and people started approaching us and they're like, hey, you have this tool and did this cool research, could you have a look at our contract? And we eventually did and the request got so many that it was made, made sense like for the founders to incorporate the company. And it slowly spread by word of mouth and um, yeah, there's really 
fairly few like active client acquisition that we did. Um, of course, during the bull market, uh, the, the requests were pouring in, we couldn't even handle all of them. But also during the beer market, um, when there was uh, more pressure on the projects to show that they are complying, compliant with regulation, that they're not just another exit scam, they wanted to have, even, there was even more demand for like some kind of certification or proof of validity in that sense. So even then we're doing fairly good and so we're lucky enough to be at the spot in the industry, I'd say. Okay. Uh, so what are your experiences with the quality of smart, of smart contracts? Is yeah. it increasing or improving? Um, yeah, I would definitely say that slowly we see a, a, an improvement and we see a kind of a way more serious approach to security as like an aspect of building a whole system because um, initially it was a bit of course overshadowed by the hype and everyone wanted to have their own smart contracts and like something deployed on the blockchain. Um, but over time there's definitely um, there are more serious people coming into the field from academia as well. There are more serious engineers. Investors become more demanding to projects in terms of what they deliver. And um, yeah, we can definitely recognize a, a steady improve. Okay, and, and in practice, if I have a smart contract and I want to have them audited by you, mm -hmm. so do you have a general process or how does it work in practice? Uh, yeah, there's a fairly straightforward process where you can just go to our website or um, write us directly and submit a GitHub link with your repository ideally where you say hey guys this is my project and ideally you have a good documentation and more so specification because of course we can generically kind of check your contract with our tools for already known vulnerability patterns but what is very difficult to handle is that you expect your system to behave in a certain way and any deviation for that expected way is in a sense also a security hole or a vulnerability because there can be unintended consequences to it. And so for the really good projects, we also have a specification where they say exactly how the system should behave. You can send all of this to us. We'll have a look, provide you a quote. And yeah, basically, if you agree with us, then you, we expect you to freeze the code, kind of to stop development for a while for us to be able to look at a stable version. And then it's a two-step process. First, we provide the immediate intermediate reports where we already list all of the findings that we found which then the project has time to kind of cover, provide patches for it. And we then review that as well, update the report saying that, hey, you fixed all of the issues or you decided not to fix issues or you redesigned your system maybe in a bit. And yeah, that would be kind of the end of the involvement then. Okay, and what tools do you use for the analysis of the, the smart contract? Yeah, um, so a lot of the tools we have is our own research. We're closely collaborating with uh, the Swiss Federal University. Um, it's called ETH Zurich and um, we have a research lab there and we use specifically Securify which is also open source and everyone is free to use it. Um, we have a symbolic execution engine um, which is a tool that allows you to reason about properties of a smart contract. So the very specification I related to earlier, we can formalize that kind of in a strict mathematical um, statement and then prove that it holds for your code. And um, then we also use AI-based fuzzing, meaning that we just try different inputs to your smart contract to try to maximize the test coverage that your contract can provide. Uh, that, I mean, maximizing test coverage over the smart contract. And AI then uses traces that are especially good or go in especially hard to find corner cases. And hopefully you find something that breaks. So the three pillars, static analysis, symbolic analysis, and fuzzing would be the main things. Okay, and if you look at uh, the programming languages, yeah. are you focused on, on Solidity or? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, just when I just started out Serpent, the previous language for smart contracts was still around. Um, so initially we looked at that as well, but these days we're heavily focused on Solidity and the EVM bytecode, what Solidity compiles down to. Um, yeah, that's our focus. Okay, and do you see any uh, uh, development there towards other smart contract languages? Mm -hmm. um, we see, of course, we have tried to keep a finger on the pulse and see where things are going. Um, so we had a look at Viper, of course, uh, and Yule and some other promising uh, language developments. But uh, so far, these are really few and in between. Um, but we're excited to see what's coming. Okay, Daniel, thank you. We're looking forward to, you, uh, to hear you speak tonight at the event. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.